Good day, beautiful people. Welcome to my channel. I'm Spiritual Bodybuilder, and thank you so much for joining my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the new moon in Leo. Let's go. So this new moon in Leo, after all this eclipse activity, man, what what a month it has been, right? There is this portal that we were sucked through, almost like a like a black hole kind of energy, in which this Plutonian, Saturnian death and rebirth, reconstruction of these foundations in our energy have been uprooted and transformed and we still don't fully understand exactly what it is that has transformed within us because it's so deep it's you know like i mean last week we had a, a bunch of earthquakes going on in california those earthquakes are a physical representation of what is going on in the collective consciousness and as we go through these rumblings these earthquakes it's bringing us into a better place leo represents the heart it represents our inner child, who we are at our core, right? Leos are like, go, let's, let's get out there. Let's go get it. It represents athleticism. It represents the inner child, right? And we want to be able to access this higher octave of Leo because what's the lower octave of Leo? It can be egotistical. It can be arrogant. And we don't like arrogance and we don't like being egotistical. But the Pluto and Saturn energy that we just ran through this past month has sort of forced that egotistical aspect out. It's like, get the F out of here. I don't want to see you anymore. If we fought it, then it was probably difficult. But either way, it's getting removed, right? Where our vibration is, is being sucked up, whether we like it or not. So hopefully you're liking it and hopefully you're seeing the benefits from all these transits. And now this is a very unique moon because, you know, it's the second uh, new moon within a, within a month. Okay. So that technically would be considered a blue moon. You know, like once in a blue moon happens very rarely. And this new moon in Leo represents a new beginning, a new start in this new chapter. It's, it's sort of putting the pinprick there for this next chapter to really start to start to take on its form. All this, all this new evolved kind of energy is, is coming up and we don't fully understand it yet. So there's still this push and pull going on between what we have just let go of and the place that we were and stepping into this new place. But this new place, it may be wonderful and awesome, but it's still uncomfortable because it's unknown, right? So, so really uh, with all the transits that are happening right now, it's a good thing. We're being infused with all this great energy, and we have to be patient with ourselves to allow it to process, to let it sink in and really step in to that, you know, new place of empowerment within us. Okay. So it'll be at eight degrees, 36 minutes of Leo. It's at 8 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so let's go into the charts and see what this has show us so first thing that that i see that comes to my mind is jupiter at 14 degrees is trying over to mars and the sun well tr the mars sun and moon really because jupiter is a big plant it's a big energy and this is right on a new moon so and Jupiter at 14 degrees is conjunct exactly the great uh, attractor. Now, the great attractor is this big, well, this, this intense, massive uh, black hole that is 100 times the mass of our sun. And it is this cosmic energy of awakening, of higher consciousness that is being you know, Jupiter being right there, it's, it's, it's being activated. It's being all this higher vibration energy being sucked into 
Jupiter and Jupiter is bringing it right into our consciousness is it's, it's, it's almost like opening up a clear channel for this energy to be infused into our, into our sun, into our personality, into who we are, into our auric field. And this is right at the spot where Jupiter is also going to go direct too. here coming up in what, two weeks on August 11th. So, you know, this is going to be is, is the first pass of two passes o- over this area. And so I believe that this is going to reap some massive benefits and rewards. This is bringing in the energy. And then when it comes back, it's going to it's going to bring that energy from within us out to the world. Right. We're going to where it's just it's going to start to manifest itself, you know, because things first, they have to come into our energetic in the, in the fifth dimension and come down to the third dimension, embody us. And then once we embody this energy, then it comes through and, and it's in its vibration and attracts this higher vibration energy into our world. So the art of manifestation, um, it definitely I, I will make a video on that. And manifestation is going to be happening very quickly and very like big with with this kind of energy. So if you're focusing on positive or, you know, things that you want, things that are true to you, things that. That, that you see yourself going to like a higher high, a higher plane of whatever it is that your aspirations are, then things can go great. If you're doing things that are sneaky or shady or anything, it's going to be thrown right in your face. Like, ah, no, ah, go. <laughs> so we're going to want to uh, watch ourselves and just have integrity, you know, we we all have our own sense of a sense of values and ethical and moral standards, and we have to abide by them strictly here, so that we can manifest what we want. Right? There's a lot of potential, a lot of opportunity to manifest things that we want in life, and to go. I mean, to be blasted, catapulted to this next level. And right now, we just got done with a second of of three checkpoints with this Saturn Pluto conjunction. Right? And as that draws closer and draws nearer, this second checkpoint is going to give us an opportunity to really come into power. And then we're going to hit that next big checkpoint in January of next year, which is the culmination um, in the Trinity. It's, 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 it's capping off that, that Trinity and really going to show us, all right, well, look at all the work that you've done here in the last fuck, 10 years. All right. And See where you're at. See where you're going to go. Because now this here's your new life. There you go. So being infused with this energy is going to give us a lot of opportunity. But we have to be responsible with the energy and bring it to that that next level to really get what we want. Okay. Um, so of course we have the the sun and moon conjunct, and Venus is coming up right behind there at four degrees uh, of Leo now. Venus and Leo together, that's a very passionate, hot, fiery, passionate, like just sexual, lusty kind of energy. I think it's a good thing. And, you know, technically that's also trying Jupiter. So, I mean, bringing this sexual energy in here. Yeah. I mean, we technically have, you know, Venus and Mars, the, the divine masculine and the, and the divine feminine. Now, in the same sign, and it seems like Venus is catching up to Mars a little bit. And, uh, you know they're talking to each other and, and, and they're in harmonious aspects. So I believe that, 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 that trine with, with each of those planets, um, uh, signs rather is really, is really gearing up to bring balance into our, uh, into our energy, right? It's, it's that, that divine feminine energy is really waking up. Venus has, you know, had that conversation with Saturn and Pluto in this last month. And, you know, now she's like, all right, we got that shit out of the way. All right, now it's time to grow. So a lot of growth potential here. A lot of great, like, next level, you know, waking up kind of energy. So next we also have Chiron, trying Venus, the sun and moon. Um, Chiron at five degrees had just gone retrograde. So that's when, you know, all these deep, deep wounds and, and, um, and deep feelings about our cell, like our unworthiness and the lack of power is being highlighted by by the leo energy so it's like you know leo is like hey dude come on it's okay to be you you know let's be real because you know what that's what we want to be and whoever don't like it fuck them and whoever does let's bring them on board but you know like there's always going to be haters there's always going to be trolls there's always going to be people that don't like you if there are not people that don't like you you're doing something wrong 
because we're all individuals. We all have our subjective perspective about how life's supposed to be, about our own value systems, right? About who we are inside. So we may project a certain thing out to the outside world, but deep down inside, like, you know, it, the, the masses don't see everything that we're made of. They see parts. They see parts that we allow the world to see, right? So this is talking about bringing that more vulnerable aspect of you, that, that stuff that you really don't let anybody see, let it come out and play. Don't be afraid of it. Don't hide it anymore. You know, Chiron and Aries, it's, it's, it's about our ego. It's about, our, it's about ourself, you know, and, you know, Chiron, I feel has a lot to do with like power struggles too, like the power struggle we have within ourselves, and in, in reference to our self-confidence and in, in, ref in, in reference to, you know, feeling good about ourselves. So with the trine over to this new moon, it's like, bam, come on out and play. Like we're a little child, like, you know, being, you know, all like, you know, hiding behind a rock. And then there's this Leo energy. It's like, you know, the lion, like, come on, get up, let's go. But we have to grab it. We have to listen to that energy and have the strength and the courage to stand up, get up and go, you know, let that Leo energy take us in to its bosom. And, you know, it's, it's a risk. There's some vulnerability here and there's a risk of like, you know, feeling, feeling very, very just like vulnerable and just not sure of like, of what you can trust. You can trust it. It's your own fear that's getting in the way of it. And this is all part of that, you know, stepping into your fear, stepping into the unknown. And once you step into that unknown, you realize, oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay, let's do this again. Right. So step into that and just just realize things coming up. It's OK because we're empowered and we're being given this opportunity. But we you know, the universe is coming down, meeting us halfway. But we have to go back up the other halfway and meet it there. And when we do, man, that's when magic happens. That's when manifestation really, really starts to pop off. So let's say, make that manifestation shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Next, we have Uranus square, the sun, moon, and Mars. So, of course, this one, uh, Uranus, the, we've been going through this Uranus-Mars square now for, you know, a while. And it's, it's, it's definitely, like, I don't really know if I'd say um, Mars is still square, but the energy is still there, but it's fading. Right, but we still have, uh, we definitely actually, it's more like uh, Venus, the sun and the moon. And so with this, with this square, you know, we have uh, Uranus in Taurus, and this is testing our self-worth. Similar in, you know, there's a semi-sextile between Chiron and Uranus. So I feel like all this sort of plays into each other. Right. So they're speaking harmoniously, but it, that's that's that earthquake feeling that it activates this deep rumbling underneath. And with the Uranus being square to the sun, moon and Venus and Mars a little bit, too. Man, that's just like, what are you going to do about it? Here's all this opportunity. Are you going to take it or are you just going to fucking throw it away and just, you know, hide away in your shell? No, you're not going to do that. Uranus is like, get your ass up and go. Let's make it happen. It's that drill sergeant, like, in your mind that's like, come on, get up. Time to go. Time to, you know, time to make shit happen. And this is where all these creative ideas can, you know, some of these creative ideas may be coming through some tension or through some frustration. But once we allow that frustration to be okay, it's going to pop open. And a lot of creativity, like a lot of creative energy here, especially – with it being a square to Venus, that's, you know, the receptivity that we allow, right? That's the divine feminine energy, like allowing ourselves to receive this energy. So it's going to be really important to embrace vulnerability in order to receive these gifts. Okay. We also have Mercury retrograde that's on its last degree of being retrograde here. Um, and uh, it's about to go direct here in the next day. And it's it's two degrees away from Pluto. That's definitely enough of an orb that uh, I'd say we've been feeling it now. It just passed over uh, Saturn and the South Node. So that one is going over all this all this energy that we've been experiencing in this last month and a half uh, with the eclipse energies. It's bringing a little more clarity into the stuff that we've been going through and and putting the final dots and pieces together. You know, for, about this stuff that we just do not want to look at, 
It's this, this is like power struggles. This is a power struggle within yourself. This is not really sure. Like if you have to make a power move or, uh, this could also be moving, you know, like, like, or going on a journey or an adventure or just wanting to get away. You know, what are you trying to run away from something or are you trying to embrace something? And you really have to sort of figure out that impulsive, like, ah, I just need to get out of here kind of feeling like, why are you feeling that? And what is propagating it? And what do you have to face? What do you have to do to make this stuff be okay? Right? Um, so, you know, anything that involves Pluto is tough. Like this last um, lunar eclipse was two degrees away from Pluto. And man, so deep. And for many people, very, very, very difficult because that's highlighting shit that we don't want to see. But at least we got the majority of that out of the way with the, with the full moon eclipse. Now we have Mercury coming back and it's going to dip back through here again because it has to go direct. It's going to have to go, you know, past, uh, past, um, past Pluto. So, yeah. So with Mercury there, it's bringing up all the rest of this stuff that we don't want to see. And it's going to say goodbye and figure it out. Okay, next, next. We also have Neptune trying the North Node and Sextile the South Node. So with Neptune, you know, of course, this is our spirituality and it being, this is helping a lot with the Saturn South Node um, Pluto aspects because it being Sextile there, you know, we have big dreams. We have big aspirations. And what are we going to do about it? Now, to counter that, the, the uh, Neptune uh, Jupiter square is making it a little confusing because, you know, Jupiter wants to expand, but with the square, it's like, what are we going to expand? And then with the, with the Saturn Pluto, it's like, okay, we have this structure, this new structure that we're trying to create, but we don't really know all of it. We don't really know what's going on. We have to make sure that in order to establish this new foundation, we have to have our priorities, right? We have to have our, our, our power within ourselves in a responsible and a way and uh, in a way that we respect ourselves, but we respect humanity as well. And uh, so with that um, being trying the North Node and sextile the South Node, uh, you know, the North Node, it's, it's, it's bringing us in. It's, 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 it's giving us this sort of dreamy visualization of what our future could look like. We have all this potential. Um, and using the Saturn Pluto South Node, it's like, what do we have to get rid of to mold this dream into place and make it solid? And that's really what this, this whole uh, Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 2020 is all about. So this is a, a great time to be infused with all this new energy and to go forward and take that step into the unknown, into that vulnerability. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the inside degrees. We have Leo, eight degrees here. A young woman sits at a piano and improvises beautiful music. Okay. Aristocracy, aristocracy, I think I said that right. Aristocracy and fine breeding open a space for their inner heart to sing. Being aware that you are giving, given manifest advantages, which makes it likely that your talents and abilities can flourish. Past life attainment pulls in present lifetime congenial context, but a shadow creeps over this beautiful scene. You take, on, you take on how others see you and reflect you, which leads to, in one direction, becoming the performer who plays to the audience, losing your center. In the other direction, to become the one who suppresses and feels guilty about outstanding individual attributes and colludes and going against yourself. Many possible directions. It all depends upon ripening to the simultaneously proud and humble, magnificent and sober. A path of character evolvement with many places to get lost and a very strong will to work through it all. Becoming fully who you are in a way that gives life to everybody and takes nothing away from anybody anywhere. So we can see that this is a very like polarized energy. We may have some like pulling in one direction or the other, but having the courage to be ourselves and, um, you know, allowing our inner heart to sing, 
when we allow our inner heart to sing, it's it's never going to be perfect, but it's going to be us. When we do that, we're going to we're, we're going to draw an audience. We're going to draw a crowd. And when we do, though, we can get lost in what the crowd thinks of us. Right. So we have to be we have to be aware of all these things that are going to throw us off center. But then we also have to have the courage to keep going forward into it. So that feeling, you know, a shadow creeps over this beautiful scene. We're going to have times where we're going to express this vulnerable, new, exciting energy. But at the same time, it's going to challenge us each step of the way. And that's how growth happens. Right. Um, So it all depends upon ripening to be simultaneously proud and humble. And that can be tough, you know, being proud, you know, there, there's a fine line between, between being proud and arrogant. There's a fine line between being humble and, you know, giving your power away. So, you know, magnificent and sober, you know, being awesome, but in a humble way, you know, or do you have to, you know, somehow alter your consciousness to be able to be out in that spotlight? That is where, you know, we, we, we have to be clear about our center and we have to hold on to that when the outside sources come in to try to challenge that center. So um, a path of character evolvement with many places to get lost and a very strong will to work through it all, becoming fully who you are in a way that gives life to everybody and takes nothing away from anybody anywhere. So, you know, that's where we can get lost kind of easy, but if we do get lost, take a step back, gain our composure, find our center. It's, this is all about keeping our center solid. Okay. So when we don't have our center solid, that's when things turn sideways. And this is, this is giving us the opportunity to take that step out in the world, right? Face something that we are afraid of or stand in our power or take responsibility for ourselves and our actions. And when it comes at us, you know, we take it in the present moment, one breath, one step at a time. And, you know, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. All right. So I hope you guys have a great Leo new moon. And please feel free to comment, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm so grateful for you guys for joining my channel and for supporting me. Uh, you know, I definitely appreciate it. If you would like an astrology reading from me, uh, please go to trinityfitnessastrology.com and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace and love.